پیش وستوکی و سرکس از بی دومت داره چه کده نیوز ادارمه ترون 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 اگزاکلی ایتس نات ا چیر ایتس ا ترون And this video is not a competition. What is it then? See, everybody talks about high voices, belted notes, vibratos, and whistle, and but not many people pay attention to low voices, and uh, that's what you are going to do today with uh, a psycho. So in music, you always have a few profiles that will always exist: a few big voices, some guy from a famous boy band. America's sweetheart or people's sweetheart, uh, some crazy raspy voice. Every generation has their idols. But um, if you look at the idols of the next generation, the younger one, you will realize that they actually have found the equivalent to profiles that existed in the previous one. Back to the game of low voices. There are really not many artists nowadays that are famous in particular for the low voice. So I decided to make this video and share it with you so we could debate who could occupy that throne. A throne that Cher occupied for so many years. Also, before I go on with examples, Please note that it's not a video on who is the best or who is the most famous or who is the most unique or who can reach, especially who can reach the lowest note. No, because if it were about that, probably somebody like, well, if you would take the fame and everything into consideration, um, Mariah Carey. <laughs> Beyonce. Why not? Because well, if you look at their branding, one is famous as the songbird for the whistle notes, and another one is the ultimate performer. With the risk of repeating myself, it's about somebody who was worldwide famous specifically for the low voice first. And then they built a whole brand around it. In other words, if you didn't have a low voice, your branding would not exist. Yeah, I like complex things. And the reason I like that is because, well, I, um... I drink a lot. And uh, this is, uh... The reason I'm not having Eastern European wine today is because, well, it was challenge on Patreon. Where, well, you can challenge me to drink anything you want me to. So cheers. Right from the bottle as a true Eastern European. The nominees are... <laughs> Cher, Sede, Fiona Del Rey, Valencia, and Diana Angulinova. Out of these three of them already succeeded at the game of deep low voices. Cher, from 60s to 2010, with Believe being her biggest hit. She is the only Billboard artist in history to have a number one single every decade for 60 years. Sade, 80s, 2010, smooth out the radar, biggest hit in the 80s. The elegant, jolly, bluesy, mysterious, sultry boy. Exotic beauty. Lana Del Rey, 2010, well, 2011 with video games, but you get the point every decade with the um, sad, depressed Marilyn Monroe branding. Doesn't have a problem like dancing in the dark in the pale moonlight. Cashmere cologne on that open road. If you haven't noticed, the criteria was worldwide fame as well, even if they were very, very different artistically. So while I was analyzing this and I was approaching the 2020s, my question was, who's gonna replace that? Who's building up that career towards that throne for, uh... The deep voice, queen. <laughs> and there they are, three insanely talented artists. Except the Lisa. Every time you're another evil, waiting for any... Nothing more than human. Fauzia. Mm -hmm. Pill. I don't really care how my silence kills that by that darling I've been having to And Diana Gudinova What we did gain to play Ways men say Maybe I'm foolish, maybe I'm blind but right from the beginning, I'm going to have to exclude Seveliza, which, by the way, was one of my favorite artists for the past five years. 
it might not make sense at first, but um, she's actually the most experimental one in terms of visuals and production, uh, which is why I'm gonna have to exclude her. Because she is in the league of Bjork and FK Twigs, and her creative process is so freaking fast, and she will not compromise that. Therefore, she will always have delayed success because she will never be in trance, she will start trance. Anyway, we are left with Diana and uh, Fonzia, two very, very, very different artists. Uh, different vocal fingerprints, different markets, different music styles. Actually, there there is one thing that connects them. Uh, Fauzia has the Arabic runs. <laughs> and Diana has the traditional Russian folk influence. <laughs> but they do differ a lot if you look at the music style. Fauzia is maybe too commercial. Well, too commercial as in... Mm, it's more difficult to succeed on that market because, well, there's more competition. But uh, Diana, the issue with her is that... um. She doesn't have um, like a signature style on her personal work, not on her covers, because on her covers everybody is able to spot that jaguar moves and uh, the tribal vibes and snake whispers. The truth is, their identities matter only temporary in the context of people adopting or switching to new trends, because if you look at Cher Sadeh and Lana Del Rey, their success was possible only due to, well, certain social behaviors in a certain era. Other than the low voice, for example, Cher, she had the wow factor of fashion icon, a pure entertainment figure, been because for so long music was about having fun, flashy colors, lights. Being loud both visually and vocally, well, allowed her to be on the throne for decades. In the middle of all of those slash arts, there was a need for sophistication, elegance, and why not mystery? I gave you all that I have inside. Same for Lana Del Rey. She started about 8-9 years before her success, but the success happened only because the trend happened. Meaning she was right at the beginning of selfies, of the social media, the way we experience it today, and video games was literally the expression of internet content winning against television of online kids making it big. La, la, la. Her version of sad, depressed Marilyn Monroe with the sleepy technique on a low voice, which is great, but uh, that's not the point, was what we saw for a decade later on on all Instagram stories and posts. It was the glamorized, depressed, damn girl. I can be a scarlet, scarlet, but I'm a sad girl. And because I drank and parted all night, my voice sounds like after a hangover. But I'm a sad and glamour girl. So, based on the idea that fame would be the sum of a 10 year old period, based on the fact that we just finished, well, we're about to finish recycling the 80s, and we are about to start the 2000s. Um, well, it's difficult to actually predict what type of music will allow Fauzia or Diana to showcase their voices and what kind of identity will be successful. But because women start trends, and if we think of it, 10 years ago it was not the same. Today's women are very goal-driven and competing with males for highly paid jobs. Um, there is a big, big, big chance that Fauzia's straightforward, determined songwriting will be a massive success. Because she is about showing that you're ambitious, confident, and bossy, maybe. <laughs> but um, her visuals lately, well, Hero, they do transport you to a K-pop area. More Asian-inspired, and her real-life personality is also adorable. It's like, adorable on fire, <laughs> if it makes sense. On the other hand, for Diana, there's a load of princessy uh -huh. uh, girls right now. So, her animal, like, tribal, almost... A character could make her stand out and she could be a massive success if she went against the trends if developed obviously but no matter who gets to sit on the throne i hope that um they get to have a sip of this lithuanian drink cheers from your psycho throne uh, a drone such a son these say 